Good morning, and welcome. So this is amazing. We must be on our highest numbers yet, I would imagine. Hopefully in front of you. Welcome too to those who have joined us um, through the live stream. Um, and it's good to have them with us. And thanks to Clive and to Sally, who are going to be working the technology. If you would like to pray for technology, if your faith allows you to do that, that is great. Um, but here we go. A couple. So, let's pause. The Lord is here. And we pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that he may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Glamen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. So let's have a pause as we prepare to confess our sins. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, <clears throat> firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. And we'll use the second of the two confessions. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness. And keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we're going to stand for the Gloria. You are allowed to hum. But we have some fabulous people who are going to, help, who are going to sing it for us.
amazing. It's just... <laughs> the prayer for today. Almighty God, you search us and know us. May we rely on you in strength and rest on you in weakness now and in all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And Jonathan's going to come and read for us. You are allowed to read without your mask on, Jonathan. Sorry? Please be seated. Um, I'm sorry about the slight confusion. But at a time when the world has been turned upside down, Rose and I were told that the gospel was coming before the reading. Don't blame us. We were just doing what we were told. Ralph. <laughs> the reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, starting at uh, chapter 13, verse 8. Owe no one anything except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And in the place of a hymn, we're going to sing a hymn from Scripture or we're going to say a hymn from scripture to be more accurate, Psalm 149. So will you please stand? And we're going to do this alternately. Um, I'll read the odd verses if you read the even verses. And we say together the words in italics, sound praises to the Lord, all the earth, at the points at which they occur. Sound praises to the Lord all the earth. Alleluia. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing his praise to the, in the congregation of the faithful. Let Israel rejoice in their maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praise to him with timbrel and lyre. For the Lord has pleasure in his people and adorns the poor with salvation. Sound praises to the Lord, all the earth. Let the faithful be joyful in glory. Let them rejoice in their ranks. With the praises of God in their mouths and a two-edged sword in their hand. To execute vengeance on the nations and punishment to the peoples. To bind their kings in chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. To execute on them the judgment decreed such honor have all his faithful servants. Hallelujah. Sound praises to the Lord, all the earth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. And we're going to remain standing as Rose comes to read for us. The Gospel reading is taken from Matthew, chapter 18, beginning at verse 15. Glory to you, O Lord. If your brother sins against you, go and show him his fault just between the two of you. 
If he listens to you, you have won your brother over. But if he will not listen, take one or two others along, so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, treat him as you would a pagan or a tax collector. If I tell you the truth, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Can I come off the step? Thank you. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your word. Help us now to think and to cogitate that word together. In Jesus' name, amen. I wonder how good you are at living together with others. It has its moments. It depends who it is, quite. Um, it's one of those things, isn't it? You know, living in community has its challenges, and whether our community is a household of one but with a family, or whether our community is a household of two or more, it has and can have its challenges, and sometimes those challenges get beyond what is possible for us as individuals, and sometimes life is absolutely fabulous. But I'm sure that what we've all experienced, whether within our immediate families or within our extended range of contacts and friends, is that there are times when relationships break down. There are times when disagreements feel just too difficult and too painful to resolve. Festering disagreement is something that I suspect many of us have experienced. I've probably said it before here, one of the things that I've always found the saddest about funeral visits is when I'm told about the members of the family who won't be there. Not because they can't travel or because they're not allowed, but because the disagreement means that there is a permanent rift. And that is sad and it is tragic and it is difficult. So how do we as Christians live together. I want to begin with that reading that Jonathan read for us. Paul says, owe no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. When I lived in Tanzania, um, I regularly used to get people coming to me asking for a loan members of the clergy, um, church leaders, church evangelists, and others. And they would come and they would say, Dada, which means sister, or Mwalimu, which means teacher, would you please lend me some money? And I'm sure this was an experience Ted had too. And what I discovered quite quickly, probably after I'd been there two or three years, was that when I lent money, relationships broke down. Because invariably, there would be a, Ted's nodding his head, invariably there would be a promise to repay. I will repay it to you. Sounds a bit like one of the stories Jesus told, you know, on this day and in this way. And then they couldn't meet that promise. And so they would avoid me. And if I was going anywhere near where they were, they would, you know, skulk around and try not to come near. And in the end, I started saying to people, no, I don't lend. I will give you a portion of what you are asking for if I felt that it was something I could do. But I no longer lend money because relationships matter more to me and I don't want to break and to harm the relationship that we have. It's a challenge and it's difficult. Love. Paul says, is the fulfillment of the law, looking after one another, respecting one another, fulfilling and watching out for one another. So one way that we deal with this is by keeping a short account. No debt 
except that of love. And the second way, Paul says, is by living as if Christ may return tomorrow. Making sure that we're ready at all times. Because the reality is that his return is nearer today than it was yesterday. We don't know when it's going to happen. It may not occur in our lifetime. But it's still nearer today than it was yesterday. And so therefore we have a responsibility to keep a short account. And a part of that responsibility is about what we put on each day. Clothe yourself in Christ. Be ready for Christ to come, living in the light where things are seen and are above board and seen. But then when, I'm not saying if because I don't think if is realistic, when things go wrong, what then? Well, Paul sa well, Jesus says in that gospel reading, first of all, sort it out in private. When I'm taking a wedding, I regularly say to wedding couples, either as part of the preparation or as part of the service, one really good aim is not to say to someone else something that you're not prepared to say to your husband or your wife. In other words, if you've got a problem, make sure that the way you're talking about that with others is a way you are content to talk about it with your husband or your wife. Sort it out in private. And if private fails, Jesus says, find someone trustworthy and try to resolve it together. We all know that one of the big challenges when relationships break down is the reconciliation, the, the sorting out the nuts and bolts of how things are resolved. And those who are able to use reconciliation services often manage the process slightly better than those which are so, um, I don't know what the word is, so drastic that that's not possible. We've seen so much, but w whatever we do, we take someone with us. Again, going back to Tanzania, there was a Tanzanian phrase, walking in the light, which came from the East African revival. Um, it was called Kutembea Nuruni, walking in the light. And walking in the light meant that you did just this, you sorted things out. And if you couldn't sort it out one to one, you found someone who would go with you. So there was a time when I had a problem with the diocesan secretary. Um, and I couldn't work out how to solve it, and I couldn't work out what I had done wrong. So someone came with me, and together we talked about it, and it turned out that the whole source of the problem was that he didn't understand what was being asked of him by my mission. But we sorted it out, and we were able then to walk together. But if we're honest, I suspect we struggle with the ending of both of those passages. Jesus, I mean, sorry, Paul, talks about um, let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. And Jesus, in the ending of the gospel reading, talks um, talks about um, whatever you bind in earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose in earth will be loosed in heaven. There is a huge responsibility here. The reality is that unresolved conflict, death, debt even, not debt, unresolved conflict, debt, or behavior has consequences that go way beyond us. The ripple effect is huge and it tends to have a voice I think both Jesus and Paul are saying beyond the grave and we're wise to take note of that fact but at the heart of all of this there is some really good news and it is this that whilst we may feel unworthy even to gather up the crumbs under the table. We're welcomed to the table. Whilst we may have 
within our own selves, within our own families, within our own communities, examples of all of this, we are still welcomed to the table because we are given the hope of resolution. We're welcomed not as those who are perfect, thanks be to God or I wouldn't be there, or as those who have resolved everything in their own lives. We're welcomed as those who know they're on a journey, a journey of development and of growth. We're welcomed as those people to pray, to let our Heavenly Father know what we struggle with and what he welcomes us and that he welcomes us to come and talk to him. So whether our struggles are about frustrations in our own lives, our own failures to love, frustrations with the lives of others, their perceived failure to love and the resulting disagreement and disappointment, or frustrations with the lives of those who lead our and other nations, how many of us shout at the television, a judgment about how they show love and justice. We can bring all of those to God. And he hears us, he welcomes us with open arms and says, come. And as we do that, we ask him to help us to put on the Lord Jesus Christ and to walk in his ways today and every day. Let's pray. Lord, we bring to you those relationships for which we are concerned. We bring to you our own lives. Help us to put on love and to walk in the light today and every day. Amen. We're going to stand as we declare our faith together. Let us declare our faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of one we have seen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. 
Um, when I recorded the intercessions, I was too far from Jan, so the volume is a bit low. Let us pray. Lord, we pray with gratitude today that we live in a beautiful and safe environment. Let us pray. Lord, we pray with gratitude today that we live in a beautiful and safe environment, especially as we move into autumn, with nature showing a multitude of colours for us to enjoy, truly a gift from God. At this time, we ask for God's blessing on the children of this land. We think of the little ones going to school for the first time, those moving into senior lives, and those who are moving to college and universities. In these uncertain times, nothing is quite the same, and so many are worried and anxious. We pray for them and for those who teach them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we ask your blessing on our government and the rulers of the world. May they be inspired to govern fairly, to help alleviate famine, disease and conflict wherever they arise, and to rule with justice for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We have rightly prayed for the major services of our country and the work they have done throughout this pandemic. Today, we pray for those who help in unobtrusive ways, people who shop the neighbours, friends who take time to those who visit the local. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. All your works echo. To you be glory and praise forever. From the beginning you have created all things. 
and all your works echo the silent music of your praise. In the fullness of time, you made us in your image, the crown of all creation. You gave us breath and speech, that with angels and archangels and all the powers of heaven, we may find a voice to sing, to say your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. How wonderful the work of your hands, O Lord. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embraced a people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From them you raised up Jesus, our Saviour, born of Mary, to be the living bread in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners, and with love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends, and taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave this to them and said, Drink this. This is the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory. And we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into living temples to your glory. Remember, Lord God, your church in every land. Reveal her unity. Preserve her peace. Guard her faith. And bring us at last with all the saints to the vision of that eternal splendor for which you have created us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise, blessing and honour and glory and power, your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs from under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. I'm, going to, I'm not going to speak as I give you communion, 
So I'm going to say the words of administration now. And at the beginning of the receiving communion, the choir are once again going to sing for us. And the words that they're singing are on the back of today's notice sheet. So the body of Christ keep you in eternal life. As I come to you, you obviously need to remove your mask. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life.
God, our creator, you feel, feed your children with the true manna, the living bread from heaven. Let this 